Good evening, City Grove, and welcome again to another episode of Growing in the Word. We are thankful that you have allowed us to come into your house once again. And on tonight, we will have a great conversation about the black church. At this time, I would like to ask Pastor Bankhead if he would open us up with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father and our God, we thank you again for another privilege and another, another opportunity uh, to come together on this wise. And, and God, we know that, that what we're doing, we're doing uh, with your people in mind. And God, so we pray right now in the name of Jesus and ask you to give us this, the wisdom necessary uh, to convey to them these things that are uh, so important to us as a community of people. For Father, we know that you are leading us and guiding us by your spirit every day. But so, Father, right now, we just ask that you would be with us throughout this session and, and bless this session as only you can do it. And we'll be careful to give your name, the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to have with us uh, my friends. We were just talking about being family. And in that group, I include Pastor John Bankhead of the New Bethel Baptist Church. Uh, is that Moxville? Moxville. Moxville, North Carolina. And also Eldon Quentin Gunther of the Dennis Chapel FBH. And Church. Church. <laughs> Thank you. Church. And I'm going to let you guys go ahead and introduce yourself just a little bit further. So at this time, Elder Gunther, if you will. God bless you, saints. Uh, my name is Elder Quentin Gunther. I'm, again, the pastor of uh, Dennis Chapel FBH Church in North Winsboro, North Carolina. Uh, I currently work at Winston-Salem State University as the interim EEO director uh, for the university. And uh, I have been pastoring for, I think, going on five years now. Uh, I've been preaching since 2000, so that's about 21 years uh, that the Lord has blessed me to do such a work because this is a work uh, and there's so much to be done. Uh, as, as the Bible says, the uh, the harvest is plenty, but the labor labor is a few. Um, so we're um, elated to be a part of this session on tonight with Pastor Marion Franks, uh, my colleague, and I'm thankful for Pastor John Bankhead. Uh, a little bit about myself that's not so spiritual, I guess. <laughs> uh, I am a, a CPR instructor. I've been in teaching CPR since 2006. So that's about 15 years I've been teaching CPR. Uh, it's one of the joys that I kind of used to uh, meet new people and uh, kind of like a change from the ordinary. So I uh, enjoy doing that. I do have a small lawn service, um, uh, Quentin's Lawn Care. So I've been doing that for about since probably since I was like nine years old. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's just good to uh, be a part of this again, this session with my colleagues here in the gospel. And I'm excited about what, what we will share tonight. Amen. Amen know how to save people two, two or three different ways. Amen. And also we have uh, Pastor John Bankhead, if you will. Uh, God bless you. My name is uh, Pastor John R. Bankhead. I'm from Kannapolis, North Carolina. I'm presently the pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church of Moxville, North Carolina, where I've been there pastoring now uh, for three years. Uh, I've been in ministry um, uh, for 24 years. I, I preached my uh, first sermon in 1998, uh, just 30 days after my father died. Mm -hmm. And so he never got a chance to, to hear me preach. He, we did talk about my calling into the ministry. He told me simply, son, I'm going to leave it up to you and God, because nobody knows you like your dad and your mama know you. <laughs> and I'm very proud to be uh, in a position to where God has used me for 24 years uh, through the good and the bad times. God has always been faithful to his word. And so um, presently, I, after 35 years of, of uh, working as a chef, uh, <laughs> um, I now work for a company called Tegra Global. Uh, it's a company where we, we actually print all of the jerseys for the major sports uh, entities in the country, and we ship stuff all over the world. Uh, it's a very good job. I really, I really like it, and it, and it doesn't get in the way of, of, of ministry. That's one of the things about it. Whenever I got out of being a chef, my thing was to get into a job 
that did not get in the way of what I was going to do for the Lord, because I'll quit that job tomorrow if, if, if that was the case. Uh, but I'm very proud of, of the church that, that I pastor. They're, they're very good people at that church. And, and, and through our ups and downs, God has always been the mainstay. And if I could say anything to anybody uh, in terms of what they do for God, that statement about what you do for God is the only thing that matters. You better you can take that to the bank because God will be faithful even when we're not faithful. Amen. It's so good to have two brothers who love the Lord and who love the Lord's church. And tonight uh, we're here to talk about the Lord's Church. We're here to talk about the, the state of the black church. And we have a few conversational questions that we will talk about, uh, starting with this one. What is the role of the black church in the community? Uh, Elder Gunther, what is the role of the black church in the community? I think that the role in the black church in the community, let me just first start off with the role of any church in the community is to is uh is education about jesus christ right um is it's about christianity it's about morality so the church teaches us a number of things jesus said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you uh and with the let me just uh give a little background so you know with the emancipation proclamation you know the slaves were freed and we were previously going to the white church and we had the white, what they call the white man religion, but I'm glad I'm in this religion because I have a relationship more so. All right. In religion, right? Amen. Uh, that's all about relationship. You know, we know that our, our ancestors, they took time to actually um, start their own churches, the black church. And I'll tell anybody, the black church is so powerful. It's such an institution that you can get a wide range of uh, worship styles, worship experiences, it's just something to really behold within the black church. It's something that I prize, something that I enjoy. It's a part of me. I've been in church all my life. Uh, but the role of the black church is simply to, um, to so we can interact with our peers, with fellow parishioners, with our pastor. We get to know the word of God together. We get to grow in his spirit together. We get to grow in the, in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together. Uh, it's not about all the hoop and circumstance and the popping circumstances, as they say, but it's all about relationship. My relationship with God first and my relationship with you and, and, and each other. Um, the, uh, the, the black church is still the black church. I mean, the black church, excuse me, is still the church where we are uh, uh, encouraged to go and learn and get higher education. So that we can be, look, a greater threat to the enemy. <laughs> we can be a greater threat to the enemy uh, once we're educated uh, through the word of God, through our secular jobs. We're able to witness, uh, you know, to our, fellow, to our fellow man because everyone is not saved. That's just the truth. Everyone is not saved. But we can share the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we go. Now, I'm not saying go out here and testify at the light bill place or the water bill place. No, you need to go in there and pay your bill, right? But <laughs> we can, when God gives us an opportunity to witness, that's what we are supposed to do. And I think that the role of the black church is in the forefront and the back of that particular mission uh, to reach those that are lost, uh, to reach those that need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And it helps us to grow um Holistically, so we got spiritually, we have physically, we have mo emotionally, because we're, we're reaching the whole man, right? And once the whole man is reached, once the whole man is whole, once the whole man is healed, we're able to share uh, and be a great asset to our to our fellow man. Amen. Pastor Bank here. Yes, um, the role of the black church, um, the way that I see it is uh, in the community is to to to, to kind of garner a respect for the community mm -hmm. we, we we have to we have to look first of all and we have to understand that <clears throat> that the black church used to be a uh, stable in the community mm -hmm. uh, that's where we came from that's how we came up the black church was so important that uh, uh when people recognized church leaders they got themselves together they didn't even want to be seen uh in era when the church leader was coming down uh coming down the way 
uh, whether it be the preacher, the deacon, or whatever, the respect level was there uh, for the black church. Uh, a lot of studies have been have been done on, on, on the state of the black church and how it's connected to the community. And I think we can all agree on one thing that we are in definite decline. We, we, we are in a decline as it, as it pertains to uh, uh, the community's respect for the church. Uh, I guess one of the questions is how do we get there? But I know uh, that it's very important for church leaders to do what we're doing right now. This is so very important because the community needs to see us tied together in a fashion that 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 we're not dictating to them, but we're kind of practicing what we preach. Mm -hmm. um, when I hear people say that the black church is dead or dying, it, it really it offends me. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the reason it offends me is because Jesus said that upon this church, I will build I mean, upon this rock, I will build my church and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, either we believe what Jesus said, or we are in the face of Jesus calling him a lie. Mm. The church is not dead. Mm -hmm. uh, we're either gonna believe that, or we're gonna believe that the church is dying. So when I look at the issue of the dead church from, uh, from a dif different perspective, I believe the statement that Jesus made is just as true today as it was when he made it years ago that the church is not the church is not dying mm -hmm. i think within the community i think the people who make up the church are living too close to the edge of destruction and 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 the word of god can be like a faint heartbeat in a person on a deathbed mm -hmm. we we've heard things about uh, we we've heard reports about people being hooked up to life support systems and and and, the, and their heartbeat was so faint that the monitor didn't even pick it up they were declared dead and then moments later, the doctor would walk into the room and they would move their hand or they would move their foot and he would do further uh, 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 checking them out further to find out that they did have a heartbeat, but it was faint. And this is the way I feel like the church and the community uh, uh, is right now. I believe we have a heartbeat in the community, but it's, but it's a faint heartbeat. And it's not one where we uh, are going to be declared dead and need a resurrection. But it's one where we're declared that the monitor of the community can't pick us up and we need some resuscitation. It's not a resurrection. We need resuscitation. Mm -hmm. And until we get to that point, because people really have lost uh, their respect for the church. And now, 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 uh, further on down, we'll discuss it because we got another question that I really want to tap into. Uh, and, and I want to talk about later, how exactly did we get where we are today? Because mm -hmm. it didn't happen overnight. It was a progressive thing. Just the, just the sin is progressive. That's right. You know, everything happens over a period of time. But when we start talking about those millennials, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to, I want to try and uh, shed some light on something that I've experienced and live, seen for myself. Because I have children that don't have respect for the church. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Children that I birthed and mm -hmm. their father is a preacher mm -hmm. and they don't have they don't have what I think they should have for the church. And and we'll talk about that in detail a little bit in a little bit uh a little bit later. But I think the church has an issue with the community and the issue is that we don't have the same heartbeat that our forefathers had with the community. Man, um, one thing is I look at the question, the role of the black church in the community. We first have to uh, think about the black church and, and, and what is the black church? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it may sound like an easy question, but the, the truth of the matter is that uh, there is not just one black church. Uh, right. we, we're, not, we're not monolithic in, in how, we, how we think. Uh, we do differently at the Baptist church than you do at the FBH church. Um, but we all believe in the same Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that what brings the black church together is that we have in, on this country, in this country, the shared events of slavery, uh, Jim Crow, and mm -hmm. what we've just had recently, um, uh, 
uh, with the social injustice of, of the, the 2020s and 19s and uh, the, the 2000s. Um, mm -hmm. We have these all in common uh, where at, at least two of those points, talking about in slavery and in Jim Crow, the black church took the lead. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The black church was the guiding force in helping us to get through. Uh, the black church was uh, what brought us up out of slavery and allowed us to keep momentum. The black church was what brought us up out of Jim Crow and allowed us to keep momentum and, and to hit on uh, a little bit of what you said earlier, Elder Gunther, uh, because of that, um, we now have this uh, church whereby we can fulfill the role that Jesus left us. And, and the role that he left us was that we ought to be a light to his people. We ought to be the ones who are able to show Christ to those who are lost. Because, yes, there's still a dying world in front of us. There are still lost people, and we ought to be able to be the ones that show. Well, how do you show that? You show that through showing the love of Jesus Christ. You show that through showing social justice when it's needed. You show that through being the church that Jesus left us to be. Um, and you have to do that amidst... Um, all these other issues that we deal with. Mm -hmm. You have to do that amidst, um, in a lot of cases, racism. You have to do that against sexism. You have to do that uh, amidst the, the rise of all of these other things that stand against the church. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, you got to hold up the banner of Jesus Christ. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot in the community because our community is so different. Our community is changing. Um, Pastor Bankhead, I heard when you were talking about uh, the respect that used to be garnered when the deacon would walk down the street or when the pastor would walk down the street. That's changing in our community. Uh, nowadays, you know, a lot of people in the community don't know the pastor, don't know the deacon, uh, and don't know who they are when they walk down the street. Hard to get a wave sometimes. Um, but this is just what we have in front of us. Any any other thoughts that you want to add to this? I like the point, uh, Pastor Franks, where you talked about the church led and the church was leading through slavery and through uh, Jim Crow laws. Um, and they even burned down the church, but the black mm -hmm. church stopped it. So it wasn't right. a, oh, hammer. It wasn't Freak. a, <laughs> <laughs> but it was the institution and, and the power behind the black church, which was the spirit of God. It still is. Amen. Yeah, yeah. All right. Our second question, and, 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 and I'm going to start with you on this one, Pastor Bankhead. With many millennials leaving the black church, what things can the church do to continue to thrive into the next century? Well, well the first thing the church can do is, is not try to produce uh, things within the church to keep them. Mm. That's a, that's the first thing the church needs to do. What we're what we're guilty of a lot in the church is trying to produce uh, the things that's going to draw them back. When in fact, some of our smaller congregations, like the one I uh, pastor, uh, we're not able to. We 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 can't compete with that. And so when you have these these, I, I think one of the things that. Uh, and I don't know how you, you guys feel about uh, this, but I think one of the things that has really hurt the black church is this idea of mega church. Mm. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because uh, it, it's okay to belong to a church uh, that's got 4,000 members. And I say this out of experience because uh, I had an uncle that belonged to a church. I won't call the name, but my uncle passed away. And when I went to that church for his funeral, I was met at the door by the pastor. And I said to the pastor, I says, uh, no, it was the day before his funeral. I said to the pastor, I says, uh, yeah, I uh, have an uncle that, that, that went here, he passed away. I gave him his name and the pastor says, I don't know if I ever met him before. Mm. He had been a member of that church for 40 years. Wow. And the pastor didn't know him. 
And so I, I say, when you talk, see, all of that is community based. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of attitude goes back out into the community, you know. Well, I served, my, my father or my uncle served here 30 or 40 years, and, and I was quite surprised that the pastor didn't know him. Uh, my connection and what I'm trying to get you to understand is I used to be a chef mm -hmm. and I probably lost more customers after a bad meal served. Mm. Are you with me now? I'm with you. After a bad meal served in, 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 uh, in, in the chef world, 10 to 15 customers won't come back if you don't handle that situation right. So it is with the church. Uh, when you got a bad church experience, uh, you're going to have people that's going to leave churches. Primarily, what we what we serve now are in the smaller churches are nothing but family churches, mm -hmm. and we can't cater just to keep them. We can't make them. We can't try to keep them from getting mad. But that's exactly what we do most of the time, mm -hmm. because we figure if they leave, they're gonna they're gonna take <laughs> they're gonna take half the ship with them. Yeah. So. Uh, that speaks not to what we're doing, but that speaks to their spirituality as a child of God, because we're not the keepers of them. Mm. The, the spirit of God is, is what keeps them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, we're being used as vessels and we can only do what we can do. Okay. Uh, a case in point, uh, and we were talking about the millennial, millennials leaving. I was always taught that if you put the right stuff in them, that they'll come back. They may not all come back, but somebody at some point is going to realize that what they had was better than what they chased. Mm. <laughs> and it's always that way. I mean, it's as simple as uh, what daddy used to say, son, you're going you're gonna to find out that the grass ain't green on the other side. And so what, what you put in them has to be such a stalemate in, within them that, that whenever they are confronted with something that doesn't look right or feel right, they know the way back home. Mm -hmm. And they may never come back to, per se, the church, to your church, but they may come back to a smaller setting where they can really, really start to let God's word sink in. In a larger setting, you got also a lot, a lot more, um, well, what word am I looking for? Well, you got a lot more interruptions distractions. you don't have you don't have the privacy with god that you need to have with god um, in a mass cover uh cover uh mass of people mm -hmm. There's too much going on sometimes and young people you, if you don't get their attention you lost them right. there's too much going on and so what we do is we we have big meals everybody like to eat you have a musical program you can fill your church up. You have funerals. You can fill your church up. Mm -hmm. But when you get ready to preach the word, that's when you got the less amount of members. And if you got a full church, you got a le uh, least amount of members listening because mm -hmm. there's so much going on. And so how do we how do we get how do we get past that? Because it's not just Dr. French what's going on the outside of the church. We're being attacked from the outside and the inside. Mm -hmm. And as leaders, we got to figure out <laughs> what battles to fight. Yeah. We got to figure out how to maneuver our way, uh, ourselves through it, where we don't lose people for lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Satan might be sitting on the pew beside them, mm. feeding them a bad meal mm. while you're preaching them the word of God. Mm. Elder Gunter. That's hard to follow up. I know, I know. I was feeling for you right there when I called your name. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did write a few notes on here. Said, Thank you, Pastor Bankhead. That was that was well said. Uh, I feel your heart in that, so I appreciate that uh, very much because I I think I've seen that um, quite a bit myself. Uh, being kind of a slight millennial, I guess. Uh, whatever I've seen different, you know range of years that you're a millennial or whatever so I'm kind of like on the borderline I think but um I think that what the what the the, the, the issues that we're having with the uh, millennials leaving the black church uh, Jesus said and I if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me right look out Elder, look out <laughs> so of course he was speaking of the cross right 
and his way of death. And we know he died on the cross. That's what we preach and teach. Uh, that's the that's the that's the uh, the crux of if that's the right word. That's the the juice of Christianity. I put like that for lack of a better word. But guess what? He's alive forevermore now. So we are to continue to lift up the Savior in our worship and our praise and our testimony and our witness. Uh, in the church, in our exaltation, and the Bible speaks about a great falling away. You know, it didn't say what age group, but it spoke, it spoke about a great falling away. Um, and like you said, uh, Pastor Bankhead said, you know, you train up a child the way he should go when he's old, he won't depart from it. And like you said, some people will come back, some people may not make it back. You just never know. But the word was implanted in them, so it's on them. God never forces himself on anyone, right? That's right. That's right. On us. And he's going to give us free will. He's going to give us free choice to decide which uh, way we want to do. But the thing about it is we, if we continue to do our job, the church of the living God will forever be triumphant, right? It will forever be triumphant. And uh, the millennials and others are taught that there are other ways to find God. That is a common thing nowadays. There are other ways to find God. People say there are many ways to God. Mm. Okay. Well, we don't teach that over here. <laughs> There's one way to God, and that's Jesus Christ the Son, right? right. Um, and, and sadly, I, I hate to say this, but a lot of people, a lot of millennials, have been mistreated in the church. That's true. Right? Oh, it's like that is one of the worst hurts that you can experience. I don't know why it hurts so bad. Maybe because, you know, you're saying, okay, well, they have heaven's best. They're doing all they can, but I have been hurt in the church. So therefore, I'm not going back to the church, right? So I had a conversation with a, co a co-worker in that same predicament, and she was trying to base it on this, this, and that. I said, no, you have to know God for yourself. You have to know him in a real and righteous way. Uh, you can't focus on, forget about what happened. You have to move on, you know, because the forgiveness, we know that forgiveness is all for us anyway. Uh, not necessarily the other person, but all for us so that we can move on. But you go find God your, in your way, uh, have a relationship with him where you can thrive, uh, and she's a millennial. Um, but we do have to continue to show love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Uh, it's just one of the things that we have to do. We're so quick to judge. I know in the black church, we're very quick to judge. I've been a recipient of that, right? Um, and it's, it's just so disheartening. Because, look, God saved you from something. He can save me from something else. That's right. That's right. Okay? And we I don't know where we, we, give, we give the Lord our lives, and all of a sudden, we just think that we're just holding them out. You know, we can do no wrong. Talk. Talk. That's what you say. We can do no wrong, and we, we actually confuse the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. You know, I'm looking at the gospel. Well, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't want to be a part of that. If I got to be mean and holy, that's not me, you know. And, I, and that's a common misconception that uh, holiness is is about, um, you know, about you know looking a certain way as far as you know um, having you know dresses down to the floor. It's not about that. It's just about a right relationship with Jesus Christ and doing all that He has told us to do in His Word, and we follow His lead. That's all it is, right? That's all. It is. So we um Paul, Paul did talk about the older women and the older men, you know, um encouraging and, and, and teaching yeah. younger women and the younger men. That's right. We get back to that in a right in a non-judgmental way, maybe that would be one of the things that will cause the millennials to come back because they need to feel that love. Yeah. That love is what's gonna draw them into this. Uh, uh, Jesus said his love and kindness drew us, right? That's right. Yeah, the love and kindness have I drawn me. So that same love, that same kindness is going to draw these young people back to the black church. Amen. Amen. You y'all you, y'all you, hit on y'all hit on. It's, it's it's just been a lot hitting on. Yeah. Uh, on yesterday, my associate preached over the uh, the, the prodigal son. Uh huh. And 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 this is right there in there. This is everything yeah. that you guys yeah. have been saying are right there. Uh, and and the one thing that really stands out uh especially what you hit on elder gunther is that uh in the in in the prodigal son you remember when the son finally came home mm -hmm. he was not met 
with criticism. He was not met with judging. He was not met with hostility. He was not met with, in fact, everything that he had practiced mm -hmm. uh, to say to his father, his father said, none of that matters. My mm -hmm. son, who was once dead, is alive and he and he's here and he's go get my robe go get my ring go get the fatty calf we're about to celebrate and i not and, and my hope is that's what we could be those of us who are in the historic church whenever one would come back whenever one would come back we we, we would meet them with that love that you talked about because that's what's going to make the difference yes 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 there has been church hurt I think that we we can't we can't ne negate the fact that over the years there have been church hurts, um, and and unfortunately that church hurt has been painted across all churches, mm -hmm. not just not just the one church but all churches. That's but right. even if it did happen in in your church, uh, we 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 have to get to a place where we're better than that. That's right. We have to get to a place where where we don't have that type of judgment anymore we got to get to a place where we where we realize that all have sinned and fallen short mm -hmm. of glory of god we and there are none that are holy none but one none of us uh and and that we're all sinners who've been saved by grace mm -hmm. and it's only grace grace alone not mm -hmm. by works so that no man may boast it's, it's i'm glad god put those words in the bible <laughs> <laughs> Cause that 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 helped to keep you straight. That helped to put you back put you back down to earth. Not by work, so that no man may boast. That's right. That's right. Um, but but the church, we have to develop that as being our culture. Our culture ought to be one, mm -hmm. where when a person comes to begin their walk, their relationship with the Lord, they find sanctuary. Mm -hmm. They find safety. Yeah. Uh, they find co-laborers, people who are there, who uh, care, who love, and who can put their arm around them and show them the type of love that Christ showed. And a lack of judgment. There's a whole lot of things that, that, that I mean, you know, everybody want to wear a robe and be a judge, but God didn't call none of us to be that. Mm -hmm. So... If we can fix those things, I, I agree. I agree with you, Pastor Bankhead. Not all of them who left are going to come back. Mm. Uh, but we have to develop our church and we have to develop tactics that even the ones that left, we got to go out and seek those who never came in. Wow. Uh, I, I think I heard somebody say the fields are plenteous, but the labors are few. Mm -hmm. uh, and and part of what we're here to do, uh, you you look at those Pew reports, and they'll tell you that only sixty six percent of African Americans are, are in church. Period. Mm -hmm. Well, what that tells me is that there's another uh, another bunch, uh, another percentage that are not in the church, the unchurched, mm -hmm. and that's those are the ones that we need to go into the highways and the hedges, and and when we bring them in, we ought to bring them into a place where they can meet Jesus, where they can have that sanctuary, where they can have that, that quietness so that they can grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. Right. Um, and, and then we'll be fulfilling um, what the Lord has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on, on, on that, that topic? Yeah, I, I just want to, I just want to uh, close, uh, close that topic with a one liner that, and you, and you said it um, uh, in a way you said it, that, that the church today is still, in the hands of those of us who have been called by God to walk, to look after the church. It's in our hands. That's right. I mean, we have to continue to beat the pavement. We have to continue to stand firm on the word of God. And we have to continue to show that love in, in, in the hopes that it'll transcend into something else. And, you know, most people that you show love to, they love you back. Most people. Mm -hmm. most, most people that hadn't been wounded and want to give you excuses why they can't love you and or something like but most people when you generally embrace them and love them they love you back and and, and that's been what I've been about ever since I've been at even before I got to New Bethel when I was at Jerusalem same thing just love people I got the best advice 
than anybody could have given me when I went to uh, when I got to uh, New Bethel. Uh, one of the older preachers, uh, 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 Pastor Arthur Higgins, he was over at the St. Luke Church there in Salisbury. He said, Grand Bankhead, when you get there, two things and you'll be okay. He said, love the Lord and love the people. Amen. The best advice that anybody ever gave me as far as that goes in, in, in terms of going in and trying to pastor a church. Because I had never pastored a church. Mm -hmm. I had always been a supply. I, I think I shared that with you, Dr. Frank. Mm -hmm. I've always been a supply minister. Just mm -hmm. anywhere somebody needed me, that's where I would go. Mm -hmm. And I and I had kind of flowed that way for 20 years. <laughs> you know, and I enjoyed doing it. Uh -huh. And so when I got an opportunity to the pastor uh, there at New Bethel, it's, it, it, I know it was a God sin. I know it was God. Mm -hmm. because I went in as a favor mm -hmm. to someone that, that, that wasn't able to do it. Wow. And I went in. Can you come back next Sunday? And I went. Can you come back next Sunday? And I went. And I still ain't made it back to, Jeru uh, to Jerusalem yet. <laughs> You so found, you found, the, you found the place where God wants you to be. Hey, God, and that's the only place you're going to bloom. Mm -hmm. I, I could uproot myself and go to a church that's uh, larger membership or whatever, but if God didn't plant me there, I'm not mm -hmm. going to have success there. That's right. So that's the reason I love where I'm at because God planted me there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I think you started that discussion, uh, Doc, talking about stewardship. <laughs> Oftentimes mm -hmm. we mention stewardship, people think we're talking about money, but you know, stewardship is whatever God has placed in your hands. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, and and this is this is a word for pastors. This is a word for pastors. That that stewardship means that you have to be responsible for those that God has placed in your hands. Absolutely. And you have to show them the love that Christ shows them as best you can. All right. Any, okay. Anything else? That's good. I love it. Oh, that's too powerful to come back on. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Third question. Uh, Elder Gunther, during the past few years, the Black Lives Matter movement has moved away from the black church. Does this mean that the black church has lost its place in the fight for social justice and equality? Thank you for that question, Dr. Franks. Uh, I do not think that the church has lost its place in the quest for equality. Um, I am concerned about our visibility. Um, I don't, don't have much to say on that, but I did find a quote, and I think this will kind of sum up my sentiments. Uh, it's by Terrence L. Johnson, and he presented on the Berkeley Forum uh, at, at Georgetown University. And the forum was entitled Black Lives Matter and the Black Church. Mm. Um, so I think, like I said, I think this sums it up for me. So just bear with me. It's not too long. It's not long at all. Um, the Black Lives Movement emerges from this African-American religious context. And the Black Church stands as a cultural site and epistemic resource for the movement. The Black Lives Matter movement inherits its call to rebuild the Black Liberation Movement, from the Black Church's historical role in developing a theology of liberation based on social justice. He says, I'm not suggesting the founders of the Black Lives Matter turn to the church for assistance as they imagine their movement. However, the vocabulary and the hermeneutical moves they employ resonate with the political vocabulary and ambitions of many progressive black churches. And he says the Black Lives Matter movement is a natural extension of the black church. Uh, excuse me, the Black Lives Movement uh, Matter movement is a natural extension of the black church's historical commitment to social transformation, liberation, and justice. So I, I totally agree with that. I think that we're still behind it. It's just our visibility. Uh, I was watching something on Netflix the other night. It's called On the Streets. They were talking about Black Lives Matter, and uh, it, it was kind of centered around Michael Brown and um, when he was shot by you know by a white police officer. 
Uh, but they were saying, one of the guys was saying, hey, where's the church in essence? Where's the church? And that, that really kind of hit home for me because I thought about your question. <laughs> that was, you know, that, we, uh, that we're talking about now. I said, wow, where is the church? And not only is Black Lives Matter, where is the church in, in the community at large? You know, a lot of times we have the name of the church being, you know, somewhere where you just collect money. Mm. Because that's what a lot of people are focusing on. But no, that's not the that's not the focus. The focus is on salvation in Jesus Christ. All the rest of that stuff will come. You know, we don't have to worry about that. All that stuff is going to come. But where is the church in the community at large? And that, that's my question that I want. Pastor Ben Kidd. Yes, I don't th I don't personally think that the Black Lives Matter movement has lost a step. And, and I say that because when you think about uh, the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. uh, it was the first Black Lives Matter movement. I, I mean, that's what our people have been have been screaming that we matter mm -hmm. for a long time. Oh, yeah. But the difference in the, uh, the civil rights movement and the Black Lives Matter movement is simply uh, that the movement got bigger than the church. Mm. That, I mean, from 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 what I from what I can understand and from what I can see, mm -hmm. the church is very involved in the movement. Mm -hmm. But the movement is so big; it's sort of like uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, David and Goliath. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, everybody saw a giant. Mm. David saw a God that was larger than the giant. So the church is there within the movement, but the movement is so big that it minimizes uh, the visibility of the church. Mm. Because if you look within the movement and you, and you look across the board, there's a lot of people that's connected to the church mm -hmm. that's involved in the movement. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that's not connected to the church that's needed in the movement that's there mm -hmm. because they're suffering just like everybody else. God has this unique way of allowing all of us to suffer in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And so the Black Lives Matter movement got rich sufferers, poor sufferers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, white sufferers, black, you know, we, we, we leave out segments of society. But if you think about one of the most uh, critical things, and I think one of the most important things in the Black Lives Movement was the fact that it wasn't just Black. That's true. And, and we, we tag it as a Black Lives Movement, mm -hmm. but actually these millennials and these, these young people that, that, that have been, for lack of a better word, just thrown away by many in the church. Mm -hmm. That's the power of the movement. Yeah. Uh, Dr. King made a statement that if we can't live together then, and then as brothers and sisters, then we would perish mm. as fools. Mm. And when you see young blacks and young whites and young Latinos and all of that, and they're all out marching for the same cause, mm -hmm. I see the beauty of what Dr. King was talking about. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Dr. King, this, this was the vision that Dr. King was talking about. This, this, this America that's uh, multi-colored. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's always been multi-colored, but it's always had one color highlighted, and and it, everybody else had to had to deal with the scraps that fell from the table. But in that movement, I see power. I still see the church, I, uh, but what I don't see is I don't see a leader within the movement with the power to pull it all together. Mm -hmm. That's what's missing, mm -hmm. I, I, and I don't I don't know. Uh, God's got his timetable for everything, but mm -hmm. I don't see what, what I see from leaders of the movement is I see a lot of contention, mm -hmm. a lot of big egos, mm -hmm. a lot of credit takers while mm -hmm. people still suffer. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's my thing. I mean, even if you look back as far as the civil rights movement in this country, whenever uh, uh, in, the, in the days where we were growing up, as, as young kids, uh, everybody had the same thing in common. Mm -hmm. None of us had anything. But I, my, I remember uh, in the community I grew up in, uh, one family would take their nothing and marry it up with the neighbors, nothing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we had something. We thought we did, 
Yeah. You know, and then and then things start happening like uh, uh, advancement. Certain members of our race start advancing. And advancement to them meant that I was never going to be poor again. So they refused to look back and contribute to the cause of the people that they, you know, they advanced above, mm -hmm. which were their own people. Mm -hmm. Advancement is, is a positive and a negative thing. And then in the same light, we had celebrity. Celebrity for some meant I'm somebody. But what about that person that can't uh, dribble a basketball or that person that, they can't dunk a basketball or run a touchdown on the field. They still matter. That's right. Mm -hmm. But society has crept into our black psychic and did it to us again. You remember uh, reading about the old slave masters and uh, way back in the day and how they would pit one against the other. Oh, yeah. It hadn't changed. Mm -hmm. The same thing has happened all over again in the church is under attack because the only way that you can you can you can really put us down as a race of people is to attack the church because even when they were hanging us we had a sunday to worship mm -hmm. we were able to come together it, it's it's something about that mm -hmm. and, and 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 jesus's words reign supreme when i think about uh, slaves that were hung, and then on Saturday, on the Sundays, the slave master would allow them time to worship. Jesus says, "What? Upon this rock, mm -hmm. I will build my church." Mm -hmm. Then he says later that uh, 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 in the Word, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Mm -hmm. And don't you know that if the slave masters knew? that us coming together will continue to uh, keep us grounded in God. They mm. would they would have done away with that worship service, mm. but God wouldn't allow it. And so it is today. God is not going to allow certain things I when it comes to his, when it comes to his people. And I'm not just talking black people. Right. When it comes to God's people, he's not going to allow the enemy, mm -hmm. but a certain amount of, but a certain amount of distance. Mm -hmm. and have you tried my, Servant Job. Right. <laughs> he, he, he's only so far you're going to be able to go. Yes, sir. That's and God's, God's going to put the stake in the ground and say enough is enough. And that's what we're living in right now. We're living in that enough is enough world mm -hmm. where God is really, really moving his hand. You look across the board, you can see it. God is moving his hand. Now, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that God is moving his hand because we had a black president or we got a a black female vice president. No, no, no. That, that's not what that means. What that means primarily is that the society that beat us down so long is trying to give us reprobations by promoting some of us. That's basically what that means. Mm -hmm. And that may not have nothing to do with God. But we'll accept it because it's the right thing to do. If you're qualified, the color doesn't matter. If you're qualified for a position, uh, uh, Elder Gunter, and, mm -hmm. and you know you're qualified for it, and somebody else gets it, you don't care whether that person is black, white, green, or yellow. You just feel like you've been wrong because you didn't get it. Right, right. But what we want to do is we want to tie the color element into it mm -hmm. and make it a make it make it racial. Mm -hmm. And it's not always racial, but the problem is it's never right. And, and we got to get to the point to where we can identify with right or wrong and put race, race, racism sometime on the back shelf. Everything's not racial. racial. Some things are just wrong. That's right. Moral. Yeah. It's just wrong. Morals and values. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when considering the Black Lives Matter movement, um, Elder Gonta, I, I, I do... I do ask that question often. Where is the church? Where is the church? Um, when it when it comes to um, the death of our people, the, the church has to be has to stand. And you know, one thing is that I will say is that we can't get too comfortable as the church. Um, Pastor Bankhead, you you mentioned the fact that. Uh, while we were enslaved, 
they allowed us to go to worship service. And the one thing about it is that when you go to worship service, when you when you start to to read the Bible, uh, you you start to see how uh, Moses was able to lead his people, how he was able to stand up to Pharaoh and say, mm -hmm. "God said, let my people go." That's right. Uh, the Bible, uh, yes, it, it does bring us to Jesus, but there's an overarching theme also of liberation. Uh, you, you, you see that liberation and freedom. We've been liberated from sin. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, you, you start to see how uh, God chooses us to be free rather than to keep us enslaved. That's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So when you take that thought of liberation and you apply it to um, what we've come through, it's automatic that the church would would stand up for social justice not just the black people but of all people it's automatic that the church would stand up for equality that's an automatic thing um and when you start to see where social injustice is happening and the church is not standing up uh, more churches are more interested in the, the monies they can bring in instead of being interested in how they can help people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a far cry from what we have been. It's a far mm -hmm. cry. Um, I was I was watching the news and it, it just so happened. This is after I, after the questions went out. I, I watched uh, the news yesterday, actually, and they were talking about Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and they were talking about uh, one of the things that caught my attention is that you have Black Lives Matter and when they wanted to put out a statement, they didn't even go to the black press. Mm. Uh, I was I was caught by surprise by that. Mm. Um, but I think that we can't get too comfortable outsourcing the work of equality and social justice to any other group. Uh, we can work with them, but we still have that call. For us, it's a call. It's a call mm -hmm. to be a light in darkness. It's a call to, to be the leaders of social justice. It's not something that we just do, but it's a call. I'm glad to see millennials taking part. Yes. And I, and I would hope that we can join forces and work together to get this, 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 this dream of Martin Luther King that he talked about a long time ago. To, mm -hmm. to fruition. I, I hope that the church could be have a hand in that. I, I hate to see people dying and, and there's silence in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, that there, there ought to always be a voice, a prophetic voice that speaks out against injustice anywhere. Uh, and it should come from the church. Okay. All right, our last question. And we're coming back to you, Pastor Bankhead. How do we as the church come out of this pandemic? How do we as the church come out of this pandemic? We, we got vaccines on the way. Um, the numbers are slowly creeping down. With how do we come out of this pandemic? What is our new normal? Uh, first, first of all, let me let, let me say that coming outside of this pandemic first if you know the history of our people and and vaccinations and and, and we all know what took place yeah. uh, Tuskegee we, we all know all about that I hear more young people now using that as a backdrop mm -hmm. to say I'm not going to take the vaccination um, and they don't really know the full story of the history of it they just know that it was wrong mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to address to the population of our people who are definitely saying that I'm not going to take it, that they really need to consider taking it. 
And here's why, because if you if, if you vaccinate and you hear uh, all of the professionals talking about herd immuni immunity and all of that, which basically means when a, when a certain number of the population is is vaccinated, uh, the herd, then 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 we can go back to a sense of normalcy. But I'm going to tell you, like I told my children, if you're not going to take the vaccination, you're going to get a lot less invitations to the barbecue. Mm because I still got a mother that I got to keep well. Mm -hmm. I still want to stay well. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't love you, but what you're proposing don't make sense. So how do we come out of it as a church? We, we continue to talk about uh, the need for the vaccine, uh, not, not in a forceful way, but we need to talk about the need for it. We need to uh, relate to people that's not going to take it that, hey, look, you're not really taking it for you. You're taking it for the people around you mm -hmm. in the hopes that uh, they would take it. Now, my thinking is that young people are going to see enough of their own age group leave this world prematurely. That, and that's basically what happened in the Black Lives Matter movement, Doc. They saw their own youthful young people getting killed and slain. Mm -hmm. And they took to the streets. So I, it, it'd be a shame to wait until your family trees start getting thin because you just refuse to take a vaccination. And so we have to continue to educate them and talk to them and uh, give them our knowledge of what it is. And we have to set the example and take it ourselves. We most definitely don't need to be preaching to people about taking something that we're not going to take. That's right. Uh, me, myself, I take my second one on Saturday. Uh, uh, I, 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 I never thought about not taking it. And, 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 uh, doc, you know, that I deal with a, a, a liver ailment and at age 60, I was going to take it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I tell my children and none of my children plan to take it. Mm -hmm. You follow me? I follow you. None of them plan to take it. And all of my, I ask them all why, and they tell me the same thing. You remember what happened at Tuskegee? You weren't even born. I've never heard you talk about Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. Never. So the internet, social media, and all of this stuff that they're reading online about taking vaccinations, and then you got a segment of society uh, who would not allow their kids to be vaccinated for the flu. They're not hardly going to let their kids get vaccinated for this either. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with this enemy from inside and with and, and outside in our own homes outside our homes and our churches outside our churches it's just too much information mm -hmm. and the sad irony of it all is that people are gonna die and and, and you and our brothers are gonna funeralize them yeah. and it can be avoided mm -hmm. it can be avoided so we get out of this uh dr franks by continually uh educating them, setting good examples. And then the new norm is going to be what the old norm should have been. You got to practice safe uh, environmental health. We take it for granted. Mm -hmm. We've always taken it for granted. These, these, uh, they tell me uh, co coronavirus is, uh, uh, has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So why now? Why why now? But we have to continue to practice. I think even after uh, we reach what's called herd immunity, we're still going to have a year or two down the road to where we're just going to have to practice continual mask wearing, san uh, sanitation standards within the church that should never die. Right. It, it, it should never die. We should always have that hand sanitizer available, uh, uh, keep our places wiped down and cleaned down and it just it's just a part of of uh, a proper sanitation mm -hmm. and i think we i think we'll be okay i think we'll be okay uh we've lost a lot of people mm -hmm. a lot of people and this is why i'm talking across the globe we've we've lost a lot of people to something that um uh, probably could have been avoided that the, the the number of people i don't think we had to lose as many as we lost but we did Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. But going forward, if we don't want to lose any more, and we will, mm -hmm. but not to the extent that we've already lost, 
We just need to practice uh, our safety measures and not let them die. Yes, I, I echo what Pastor Bankhead said. Um, it's, it's very important because we do have that as a black people. Uh, we do have that notion that vaccines are out to get us or they're trying to kill us or what have you. Um, and actually, uh, to be transparent, I was one of the ones that was questioning it myself uh, because I was saying, mm, it seemed like it was too quick for me. You know, it seemed to be um, just all of a sudden when we have all these other diseases and illnesses that we're still struggling to find a vaccine for, but all of a sudden you pop up with this. But after I'd done research, I found out that they're constantly working <laughs> on a vaccine for something. Coronavirus just happened to just happened to pop up. I was like, okay, well, we have this vaccine. Let's, you know, fix it to how we need to fix it or whatever, whatever they do. Uh, in order to combat this illness or this virus, so uh, I'm 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 up and up. So I'm going to get mine sometime soon. But uh, I was in that same predicament, and I heard uh, the millennials and and older people are like, "Well, I'm not going to take it. I'm not I'm not too I'm not feeling it right now for whatever the reason." Um, but we do have to be very vigilant um, because you know um, it's better to have it and not need it. Than to have it, not than the heat, than to need it and not have it, right? That's right. Uh, so that's that's what we're saying. I'm in that boat right now. So uh, thank you, Pastor Bankhead, for that because it's, it's very important that we do continue, um, you know, those protocols and those practices, like you said, that should have been already established in the church. Um, you know, you can find some interesting things that go on in the church, as simple as hand washing or hand sanitizer, what have you, but. We have to be very mindful uh, of that. I did pick up on something else uh, just out, out of this norm because the COVID uh, has, has brought about, you know, different ways of worship. Of course, we're on Zoom now. Um, and I did take a different, slightly different approach from it. So I, I did say that we need to remain relevant in technology. Amen. Uh, because that is that's something a lot of people, a lot of people may not um you know, it may come a time where we may not allow people to come to church if they don't have the vaccine. I'm not. I'm just saying. You know, everyone is welcome. But I'm just saying it could be to that point. Um, so I'm saying we have to remain relevant in technology to make sure that we are reaching the masses as much as we can. You know, some people say Facebook is a terrible thing. No, it's not. It's how you use these things. It's how you use social media that make it what it, what they are. So. You know, this will be aired on, on Facebook. So this is this is a wonderful thing where everybody in the WWW, the whole wide world, <laughs> can see us talking about the state of the black church. So, I mean, I think it's a wonderful thing that we're able to do that and reach the masses, reach those that are in, you know, China, reach those that are in Korea, or what have you, you know, just need a little address, bam, they can see it. Just like, you know, just like we're talking, they can see us. I did say also that we need to think outside the box. I do like how Pastor Bankhead said earlier. I know I can't paraphrase, I can't say it verbatim, but in essence, he was talking about we have to stop um, offering. Uh, uh, how did you say it, Pastor? I'm sorry. We have to stop offering what we should have. Um, in essence, which instead of bringing the world into the church, you remember saying that somehow? Instead of what? You remember you said something about bringing the world into the church. We have to stop doing that to attract the young. Yes. Hey, absolutely. Uh, uh, that we have to, uh, we have to stop using basically worldly tactics right. to draw people into the church. Because if you draw them in with tactics, yeah, every Sunday the tactic got to get better. Mm. Right. It's got to get bigger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because because that's the only thing that's drawing them. Uh, it, it, it's it's uh, it's that simple. If, mm -hmm. if you draw them in with with gadgets and and props, uh, the prop has to be a bigger prop on next Sunday, mm -hmm. so you won't see them. Mm -hmm. So that, so that's the danger with using uh, uh, anything to draw them in other than the word. That's right. That's right. Yes, the word draws them. The, the word will keep them. That's right. That's right. I I totally I totally agree with that. Amen. Because at my church we were doing neighborhood giveaways and all that, 
show, and we had a great crowd. But Sunday morning, come, where were the people? Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Coming is still coming because I haven't seen. <laughs> that's that's right. And and, and Jesus, what 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 happened with Jesus? Jesus fed five thousand. Yes, he did. And then they started following him, and and then and, and, and then he stopped and said, "Wait a minute, you're not following me because of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You follow me because you want another sandwich. That's right. Basically, that's you follow me because you want another fish sandwich. That's and that's, and that's the way it is. When we when we draw people with giveaways and stuff like that." Yeah. And they're not coming until you're giving away something. You're giving away something. And that's and that's another thing. Uh, Dr. Frank's probably can attest to this, but I'm seeing in the university setting, people or, or young people in general, they want stuff given to them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to work for it. They don't want to earn it. You know, they just want, I need this answer and I need it now or else I'm not doing it. You know, and it's, it's such a disservice because we find that same thing in the church to your point. That, you know, we have these tactics and these tricks to get them in there, but what's going to keep them? Yeah. And, yeah. and, there, and there's nothing wrong with uh, giving away stuff. No. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you what, what, for me now, what makes it wrong in the church mm -hmm. is when you advertise giving away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to give it away, let it be a heart gesture. Just give it. Yeah. It don't have to be any specifically planned uh, event. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, hey, listen, we, you know, meet with, uh, whoever you need to meet with the leaders and says, look, we got this uh, uh, excess of this or that, you know, let's, let's just plan to give away. You mm -hmm. know, everybody, maybe every, everybody that comes into church on Sunday, will will do this, but mm -hmm. don't advertise mm -hmm. because then you got the people that, that don't know you're giving away, but they come to church. Yeah. They're coming not because of the giveaway. They're coming because they had Jesus on their mind when they got up that morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and it's just jelly on the bread that you gave them something when they get when you got there. You know what I mean? But I think I think a lot of times it, uh, it, we increase our crowds by some of the things that we do, and I think some of our behavior as leaders are are, are questionable. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's a good point. I totally agree with that. Um, I do I do, uh, want to see us more involved in the community. I'm not saying that every church isn't. Uh, but overall, I say I think that we need to be more involved in the community and give some of the younger people maybe a duty mm -hmm. or put them in a more leadership role or kind of shadow leadership role where they can actually get in the gusto and see how things, you know, unfold as 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 black my as let Black Lives Matter or or whatever it is, some and whatever the community effort is that the church is doing that the community is doing, get involved. I think that would. I actually keep them motivated as well, and it's something that will be long last. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I, I like what both of you all have said. Um, I'm not going to talk bad about a, a fish sandwich that was made by Jesus, though, because, you know, if Jesus made that fish sandwich, it was, it was mighty good. <laughs> it was, good. It was, it was, it was worth time. following. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to be mad time. at those people because they was following Jesus after that, that fish sandwich. <laughs> Because it was excellent, I'm sure. He had cornmeal and everything. Probably put some grits on the side. Amen. Um, but as we talk about the pandemic, you know, uh, I, I do agree. I do agree that, uh, well, since you since you brought up the the science, let me talk about the science for a second. I'm, I'm kind of qualified to talk about the science a little bit. Um, the coronavirus. We've had now three instances of the coronavirus that could have been pandemic and only one that it was a true pandemic mm -hmm. uh back in 2003 we had sars mm -hmm. uh, that was in southeast asia uh in 2008 we had mirrors that was in the middle east it was the middle eastern coronavirus and and now we we have uh this version of the coronavirus and the COVID and and one of the things is that the reason why we were able to come to a vaccine as, as quickly as we've been able to come to a vaccine is, is just what you said. Uh, and working with those other coronaviruses, mm -hmm. um, the, the science was, was already pretty much in, in play already. Um, in fact, I got some of my students, they're working on papers from 2008 talking about possible vaccines for the coronavirus, the, the SARS and the MERS coronavirus. So this is not something that 
mm -hmm. uh, happened because Trump snapped his fingers and said, I want a vaccine. That's, mm -hmm. that's not the case. It, it was not haphazardly done. But this is something that has been worked on since 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, there, we would love for there to be more testing. But that doesn't mean that it's that what we have in hand is something that's bad, because I would rather see people be protected than not protected. It's like driving down the street at 60 miles per hour and not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, the question is, you riding down the street at 60 miles per hour with your seatbelt off. If you were to have an accident, you're not going to survive it. Oh. Uh, if you have on the seatbelt, you have a better possibility of surviving. Well, mm -hmm. the same thing is true about these vaccines. If you have the vaccine, you have a better possibility of surviving. Yeah, the seatbelt might be uncomfortable for you. I don't know. You might not like the way it feels when you're strapped in it. Uh, there are people that can help you with that. But the truth of the matter is that you need the seatbelt. You need to be safety first. And that's that's the message with the church going forward is that we'll be more safety first. You know, Pastor Bankhead, one of the things I was thinking about was the usher ministry. You know, we used to have an ushers that are by the door that's handing out bulletins. I thought about bulletins as well. I don't I don't know. Uh, one of the things may be that we won't we won't have a paper bulletin just because of the transfer. Uh, we won't have the ushers ministry as we know it, but um, I'm, I'm praying over this idea of hospitality teams. And I don't know exactly uh, how it looks right now, but, but I'm thinking about it because it's a safety first issue. Um, I'm, 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 I've learned a lot about technology. We, we are on the internet. And the truth of the matter, uh, Pastor, is that when we go back, when we finally make it back into the building, when we're back in service every Sunday and it's official, I realize not everybody's going to come back. Some people have become my Internet members, and I'm not mad about that. <laughs> uh, because as long as they're receiving the word, as long as you, you're getting the word, as long as the word of God is, 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 is and, and you are a part of, what we seek to do. Uh, the, we talked about the role of the church when we started, and one of the things that is part of the role of the church is that we are missionary in, in, in action. We, we are missionaries. Uh, and we got to find ways to be still be missionaries. There's, there's still hurting folks out in the field, and we, we're the ones that go out in the field to help them. Um, so as, as part of the church, yeah, you can tune in via the internet, but we want to see your face sometimes when we out in the field working. Um, mm -hmm. And, and we, we're we going to do the best we can to, to be out in the field as safely as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we can't negate that part of being the church. We can't negate uh, the internet. We can't negate what happens in the sanctuary, and we can't negate what we do when we go out. I think those three things, they may look a little bit different, but we're yeah. still going to do them. Any other thoughts as we prepare to close? I'm just thankful for the opportunity um, to share with my brothers on tonight and to share with the World Wide Web. <laughs> And uh, just thank you, Dr. Franks, for your labor of love in this growing in the word, set these segments. And pray that God continues to bless you in this God and in all of your endeavors. And I pray the best uh, for Cedar Grove. And I also pray that God bless his beautiful. Is it beautiful? Uh, New, Bethel. New Bethel. New Bethel. New Bethel. New Bethel. And, uh, and he blesses your endeavors there at New Bethel. And, and he uh, just makes. You know, he, he, the Lord has a way of surprising us sometimes. So I pray that he just sends surprises your way. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I'm just so glad to, again, be a part and to share in this on tonight. Yeah, I too am, am, am happy that 
uh, that I got the invitation to be a part of this. It's nice uh, meeting you, uh, Elder Gunther, <laughs> and uh, uh, my adopted brother, uh, uh, Dr. Frank. He, he knows he and I, we, we're developing uh, uh, quite a relationship there in the community, and we look forward to some things uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. But I do want to thank you for uh, extending the invitation. These are the types of things that, I mean, I love sitting down and talking to brothers and mm -hmm. uh, uh families about about stuff like this because it's we're, we're doing what we were called to do Amen. Uh, uh, and and to have a medium the, that we have like the internet uh, as as elder going to say the, the world wide web the www, www. So, <laughs> and it's, it's a good thing Amen. it's a good thing i mean uh i ain't had to sanitize my hands one time <laughs> Is a, is, is a good thing. Yeah. I, do, I do want to thank you, um, Dr. Franks, mm -hmm. uh, and I look forward to uh, serving and possibly seeing you, uh, Elder Gunther, sometime in the future. You know, we uh, we will eventually, yeah. uh, to some degree, go back into the sanctuary. I do, I do know that. And I agree with you, Dr. Franks, that everybody's not going to come back. But I believe that... Uh, God has a way, just like uh, right. Elder said. Mm -hmm. God has a way of surprising us. Oh. You know, if you remember, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up when I finish this. But if you remember uh, months ago, all the fires and stuff out there in California, and they fought those fires and they fought those fires. Mm -hmm. Then I saw a report where overnight a blanket of snow fell. Mm -hmm. and God put them fires out. Watch out! Fires out like they they were trying to put them out. And God put them out overnight. Mm. with a blanket of snow so right. god still god still has power he's still in control mm. and, and and god knows what his church stands in need of mm. and whoever comes back will be just what god sends back that's right and it'll be enough to do what god wants to do so mm. be encouraged be encouraged brothers amen god bless you amen amen i, I thank you all i thank you both this has been a delightful conversation. I, I think that whoever watches will be informed and, and will be the better for watching. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all for just uh, your, your, your humbleness and, 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 and just being available. Make yourself available. Because you, you could have told me no. I, I've been told no. You could have told me no. But I'm so glad you didn't. Okay, uh, Elder Gante, if you close us out with a word of prayer, please. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come for you the almost way we know how. Just to tell you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time and this fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity to learn of you, to talk about you, to talk about your, of your word, oh God. Just help us to be the people of God you have us to be in these last and evil days. We know that you're soon to come. And Lord, we want to be ready when you come for us, oh God. We ask you to continue to bless us in all of our endeavors and our callings, oh God. Help us to be. Uh, the leaders that you have us to be, oh yes, God, yes. our people, to you, oh God, not to us, but to you, but to have so, the, so that we can have eternal life one day with you. Yes, Lord. Looking forward to it, we God, we ask you to bless us, uh, bless our families, everything, yes, everyone that touches us, oh God, we ask you to bless them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, yes, oh God, them all our prayer requests that have gone up before you, oh God, of those spoken prayer requests, those unspoken prayer requests, God, we know that you're going to meet every need. According to your will, God, we love you. We thank you. Continue to bless my brothers, oh God. Yes. In Jesus' name, we do Amen. 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 Amen.